Good evening. Welcome to SSTV News. I'm Shao Peng, broadcasting from Haikou City. Let's take a close look at the news focus today. The Hainan gibbon, one of the world's critically endangered species, welcomes two babies. The economy of Hainan Free Trade Port continues its upward momentum from January to July. Let's have a taste of the grouper soup that has tender meat and delectable flavor. Confirmed by the Hainan Given Monitoring Team of the National Park of Hainan Tropical Rainforest Administration, the Hainan Given, which is one of the world's critically endangered species, has recently added newborn babies. So far, the population of Hainan Gibbons has increased from 33 in five groups in 2020 to 35 in five groups at present. On September 5th, a press conference was held in Hainan on the newborn Hainan Gibbons. Officials reported on the protection of the animal and provided information on the newborn gibbons. The two baby apes are seven months old and six months old, both in good health. Authorities say the population of the Hainan gibbon has greatly increased from the minimum of seven to nine to 35 in five groups through effective scientific preservation. In recent years, through the pilot construction of the Hainan Tropical Rainforest National Park, we have further strengthened the construction of ecological civilization in Hainan so as to provide a better living and breeding environment for gibbons. The Hainan gibbon has been assessed as one of the world's most critically endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN. It is only distributed in a tropical rainforest of Hainan. Through restoring its habitat and planting its favorite trees on a large scale, the Hainan Tropical Rainforest National Park has optimized the environment for the Hainan gibbon. The park has also cooperated with the IUCN and global scientists to carry out research on the protection of the Hainan gibbon. We aim to gather global experts to jointly tackle the key problems in the protection of Hainan gibbons. I believe that through effective efforts, the Hainan gibbon will be able to double its population in 15 years. The conference also released the cases of gibbon protection in Hainan, which was written by 15 experts from 11 institutions around the world. These cases represent that China's protection measures of the Hainan gibbon are effective and bring new hope to the international community in the recovery of extremely endangered species. From January to July this year, Hainan continued to promote economic development. According to the most recent economic data in July, the economy of the Hainan Free Trade Port continued the upward momentum set in the first half of the year. From January to July, the completed investment in fixed assets in Hainan province increased by 18.9 percent compared with the same period last year and 25.6 percent compared with the same period in 2019. The growth rate of industrial investment excluding real estate accelerated. As the investment structure continued to optimize, the industrial investment supports the investment growth. In July, the total retail sales of consumer goods in the province reached 20.3 billion yuan, with a year-on-year -year growth of 20.7 percent in that month. From January to July, the cumulative year-on-year -year growth reached 41.9 percent, indicating that the consumer market maintained a rapid growth and continued a stable trend. The value added of industry above the designated size rose 5.8 percent year-on-year in July, up 3.1 percentage points from the previous month. From January to July, the value added in industry at the provincial level increased by 11.5 percent year-on-year. In July, the turnover of goods transported by water in the province increased 1.9 times year-on-year, -year, maintaining a doubling of growth. Civil aviation passenger turnover increased by 48.9 percent year-on-year, the total postal business increased by 13.5 percent year-on-year. By the end of July, the balance of domestic and foreign currency deposits in financial institutions in the province was about 1.1 trillion yuan, an increase of 4.2 percent compared with the beginning of the year. Outstanding loans of financial institutions in domestic and foreign currencies reached over 1 trillion yuan, up 2.4 percent from the beginning of the year. 
In July, the rates of good and excellent ambient air quality reached 100 percent, maintaining high air quality levels. The water quality of urban drinking water sources is 100 percent up to standard. On September the 4th, Haikou Fusintown Internet Information Industrial Park was awarded the second batch of National Cultural Export Bases, becoming the first National Cultural Export Base in Hainan. At the National Cultural Export Base Forum of the 2021 China International Fair for Trade in Services, licenses were awarded to 16 National Cultural Export Bases, including Haikou Fusintown Internet Information Industrial Park. At present, the industrial park gathers a number of well-known head enterprises, as well as cultural, game and animation enterprises. I hope we can attract global talent in the field of design through the open policies of the Hainan Free Trade Port and develop our design industry sharing it to the world. In the future, Haikou Fuxing Town Internet Information Industrial Park is committed to focusing on the exports of culture and games, introducing a batch of hat platforms and gathering a number of chain enterprises. It will also introduce a market-oriented investment fund and the related support policies, promoting more products made in China to the world. We are also actively building a foothold for games, hoping to use the orderly cross-border data flow in the Hainan Free Trade Port as an important carrier, to build an important platform for many overseas content review, processing and transaction. In today's series of reports, Hainan Flavors, let's enjoy the scrumptious grouper soup. As a tropical island, Hainan is evergreen and vibrant all year round. Thanks to the unique natural conditions, Hainan has rich seafood species, and grouper is one of them. We will cook grouper soup, which is different from the steamed method because we will take out the meat during the cooking process. To make grouper soup, it is better to choose a fish of about one and a half caddies. At first, the chef sliced the fish meats into fillets and left them for standby. Then he chopped the fish head and bones into small pieces and fried them repeatedly in the pot. Under the high temperature, the fish bones and fish meats were gradually crisped and released a fresh aroma. After adding water into the pot, the fried fish head and bones emulsified rapidly, and the soup became more and more milky during the boiling process. After filtration, the soup was poured into a bowl containing fish fillets, matsutek mushrooms, tofu, cordyceps flowers. As such, the grouper soup with rich ingredients is complete. Now let's taste the grouper soup. It's very fresh and sweet. We only use salt and white pepper in the cooking process. The sweetness I taste now actually comes from the grouper itself. As the sun fell, the night gradually covers the sea. Enjoying seafood with a beautiful sea view is not only a great enjoyment for the taste buds, but also visual delight. During the 2021 China International Fair for Trading Services, the World Winter Sports Beijing Expo 2021 was opened in one of the fair's venues, the Beijing Shougang Industrial Park. The expo showcases the global high-quality winter sports resources and provides all-round assistance for the upcoming 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games. At the opening ceremony of the World Winter Sports Expo on September 3rd, International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach and IOC member Samaraj sent congratulatory letters and video messages to congratulate the convening of the expo. With a total exhibition area of nearly 20,000 square meters, the expo includes eight exhibition areas covering 12 categories of exhibits. It gathers more than 500 brains from over 20 countries around the world. It applies a large number of immersive and experiential scenes to fully release the charm of ice and snow, giving full play to China's advantages in winter sports and further promoting international exchanges in winter sports. Every year, there will be more than half of exhibitors, international guests, as well as international brands participating in the expo. 
Today, we took the Expo as a good platform to present the two venues with the most difficult construction in the world, Xue Feiyan and Xue Yulong, to show the world that we have prepared well for the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games. Welcome to the most charming Winter Olympic city and to beautiful China. In May 1995, China's largest wooden sailing ship named Taisin was discovered by archaeologists. The ancient shipwreck was on display at the China Maritime Museum recently. This is the first large-scale exhibition of the Taisin shipwreck in China. The Taisin shipwreck was once the Chinese merchant ship that sank in the waters near Indonesia during the Daoguang period of the Qing dynasty. It sailed from Xiamen port in Fujian province in 1822 and headed to Batavia in Southeast Asia. The ship carried a total of about 2,000 people and large amounts of goods, including spices, silk, tea, porcelain and more. After the ship set off, it unfortunately hit some rocks when it sailed to the Gasper Street, and its entire ship sank quickly. At the crucial time, the British Indiana that just passed by rescued 190 people on the sinking Taisin ship. However, casualties were still larger than that of the Titanic, which explains why it was regarded as the Titanic of the East. In 1999, the Taisin shipwreck was salvaged, unearthing 350,000 pieces of porcelain, making it the largest ancient Chinese wooden sailboat found yet with the most undamaged cultural relics. Our aim is to reconstruct the scene of ancient Chinese ocean-going trading vessels 200 years ago. Taishin is an epitome of China's achievements on the ancient maritime Silk Road. Let's move on to some international news. Politicizing the origins of COVID-19 and the use of a non-scientific body to conduct origins tracing is counterproductive and could derail collective international efforts to end the pandemic, the Lao Ministry of Foreign Affairs said Thursday in a statement. The Lao People's Democratic Party has closely followed the development of COVID-19 origins tracing in the international arena, the statement said. Adding the country views the issue as an important and complex scientific exercise that needs to be conducted based on scientific research and study. The issue requires global efforts and cooperation among relevant specialized international scientists in an inclusive, transparent and location-wide manner, the statement said, further adding, the Lao PDR strongly believes that only through a genuine multilateralism and international cooperation and pure scientific research we will be able to overcome the prevailing challenges. The Egyptian flag carrier Egypt Air announced that it will resume flights to Kuwait starting September 5th after a year hiatus due to the epidemic. Egypt Air added on September 3rd that starting from September 5th, it will operate two daily flights to Kuwait. Two weeks ago, the Kuwaiti government announced that it will resume commercial flights from Kuwait to Egypt, India and other countries. According to a report by Arab TV, the Kuwaiti government expects Kuwait's airport to receive nearly 11,000 Egyptian passengers every week after the implementation of the policy. In August 2020, Kuwait suspended commercial flights to 31 countries, including Egypt, due to epidemic prevention considerations. Please download the SSTV app from various app stores to get access to the most updated information. As we come to the end of this broadcast, let's enjoy the beautiful scenery of Hainan. That's all for today's news. Thank you for watching. Good night.